Does a person choose magic, or does magic choose a person? Можно ли познать магию? Is it possible to comprehend magic without consciously setting such a goal? What if one pursues their own goal and, as a result, becomes able to comprehend and perceive magic? Does magic only come in contact with those who truly desire it? Or is all contact with magic predetermined? A person can really want it and not get it, as well as the other way around. Yes, and it happens all the time. Is there a formula? They've been trying to calculate this algorithm for probably the last 5,000 years, as to how does magic choose a person or how does a person choose magic. And, as if in jest, as soon as this algorithm is deduced, something happens that completely destroys the structural model leading to this algorithm. For example, for a long time there was a firm belief that one could get to magic only by being born a mage, and this was believed for a very long time, until there were people who accomplished far more with their own minds and labor than those born into families with traditions. Magic doesn't have an algorithm. What algorithms can there be when magic is the root cause of chaos? Algorithms emerge as deemed necessary and vanish when the need no longer exists. It's the same with people. You may want something badly and get it. You may crave something and not get it. You may absolutely not want something and get it. It'll just fall on you out of the blue and there you go. Or you can never get it, never want it, and not even know what it is in general. Once again, this is not algorithmic, because a single attempt at bringing it to an algorithm is already a mockery of what is called chaos by its nature. What is important? Being in the right place in the right time? No. I'll disappoint you, dear colleagues. A person and their aspirations, as well as their desires, are absolutely irrelevant. Because it is not people that magic sees. It sees everything together, including people. And if it notices that it's famine in one place and feast in the other, it will stop the famine and will not take away from the feast. Because, as you know, our universe is expanding. This is how the magical principle of addition works. This means that if a person finds themselves in a place that is experiencing addition, they are likely to receive it. That being said, no one knows what kind of addition it will be. Maybe there is something stale, something unchanging, something deadening. Many colleagues, like myself, have seen a surge in urban sorcerers, witches, and even mages, along with the expansion of megacities and men's transition from villages into the cities over the last 20-30 years. Although, in general, human logic suggests that everything should be the other way around. Living in the countryside brings a person closer to nature. They feel it, they feed from the earth, they feel it. However, it turns out that true consciousness is born and develops better in urban environments. And why is that? Because the city is a stagnant structure. And if social, egregorial or other institutions have previously established some order there, they will not change it for nothing. And what order is there in a village? The wind is blowing, the sun is shining or not, or there is no wind. Nothing is complex, for that matter. Immense complexity rests in cities. 
which creates these dead areas, where the force can't flow as freely as it usually does, like a fibrous tissue. And this is when additional splashes occur, affecting those who, as a result, suddenly gain some kind of magical abilities, or are suddenly drawn to magic to a much greater extent than those who come to it by logic, those who live in the forest surrounded by nature, who feel the forest, feel the animals. Yes, they feel all this, no questions about it. But magic doesn't enter their consciousness. Witchcraft does, as well as other forces of interaction. But magic as a skill, as a profession, as knowledge, doesn't. It appears only in those who have an immense hunger, and such hunger is felt by those who lack the flow of force, prompting them to go on a search for this force. And there is no point in looking for this force if it doesn't manifest itself in a given entity. And so the force itself fills in the gaps where there is not enough of it. That's the paradox, the most perfect paradox. If you don't know how magical force works, you won't understand that you must look for it exactly where you least expect to find it. It appears more often in densely populated places than in the forests. Why? Because magic flows naturally through the forest, but comes in a strong current whenever it's needed in the city. And a strong current is always much easier to sense, and it has a much stronger effect on your mind. I hope I've made myself clear, colleague. As a result, no one knows when or where magic will appear, when will it feel the imbalance in the world, and where and when exactly will it feel an empty space. You can learn to feel this and wander the world, trying to catch the wind, at the moment when it goes beneath the green zone, in order to fix the imbalance of energy and information in this world. You can learn to feel it similarly to your own hunger. You've probably felt hunger for information, as an example. When you start to tremble as to where to obtain something. And this hunger becomes a driving force, like a call. It lifts you up and carries you to some place. Or leads you to some virtual space. This is also magic. Magic is not always physically felt. It could also enter consciousness in the form of pure information. You never know where it will be. You just have to be in that place. This is why you need that dry hunger, when you understand that it's either now or never. And maybe learn to feel where there is famine or feast the same way magic does. It's just that the egregorial world with all of its systems operates on an algorithm of subtracting from the excess, whereas magic operates on a different principle, adding to the insufficient. So try to develop this feeling, not the one of subtracting from the excess, but but the sensing of insufficiency, sensing the imbalance between one place and space and another, one person and another, between yourself yesterday and yourself today, and learn to see this difference between filled up and dry, and to understand when and under what circumstances you suddenly went from dry to filled up, and to pinpoint this fill-up zone, that it happens at that precise moment. Then again, those who are filled up by magic this way, quickly dry up because the egregores drink them up all at once as each one of them is linked to some sort of egregorial system. But this process will keep going as long as there is life. 
as long as there are minds capable of soaking up this power like a sponge. Learn not to let yourself be trained, if it's not necessary. Calling out to it is useless. Hear me, colleague. If you believe that you can attract this force through ritual practices, thousands of generations of practitioners before you have demonstrated that you are mistaken. The things they did, from the most noble deeds to the most heinous and terrifying crimes, it doesn't work this way, as modern publicists say, in a manner of speaking. It doesn't work this way. How does it work? It works where the magic is, it blows where it pleases, even not so much where it wants it, but where it feels the disbalance. And it's particularly sensitive to disbalance in large human masses, where everything is very dense. And this density is like a fibrous tissue, which means it must be diluted. And that's where it goes. In cities, in big cities, mega cities. These are the places where amazing consciousnesses are born. It could happen at birth. It could be at their first breath. Or under any other circumstances. When they find themselves at the right time, in the right place, suddenly receiving a certain impulse a certain additional flow that changes them once and forever. This will be my answer to you, colleague.